Yes, yeah, so the tele education series, this is um this is our second session. Um but um this is the first session hosted for farmers. The first session we hosted was on Thursday for veterinarians and it was a lightning. It was interactive and we hope that it will it will it will be the same for farmers too today. I've known Dr. James Baba Wagetti now for uh, over 10 years. His practice has spanned over 25 years. 28 and, uh, years. 28, 28 years, years. 28 yeah. years uh, Dr. Wagetti. And, uh, um, and he's a major consultant to most of the large farms we have uh, across uh, Nigeria. He has been of help to numerous farmers. And of course, today we know that uh, uh, his being with us uh, will most often uh, transform the way we think about our processes, especially biosecurity on the farm. So at this moment, we want to give him the opportunity to go through the slides and then uh, take the next 15 minutes before we now go into the interaction. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. James Baba All right. Thank you, Dr. Femi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes, you loud. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Well, uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, Farmer Alert uh, by giving me this opportunity to share my experience with uh, farmers. And I also want to appreciate the presence of Dr. Ibe. I can as a senior colleague, he's our father, he's our mentor. He uh, took his time to join us. You are welcome, sir. And also, I want to apologize to many farmers that could not be able to join. Uh, there was a miss up somewhere. Myself, it's the meeting for myself and uh, Dr. Femi, we send out a flyer with only meeting ID, and uh, this meeting cannot join without a meeting ID, without the password. So I've been receiving call different from farmers that they could not join the meeting, they're asking for, for the password. So we are sorry for that, but we are trying to send the password today for them to join. But I know a lot of them will not be able to join this meeting. So we are sorry for that, and we apologize. Well. I hope you can hear me, Femi. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Well, today our topic is avian flu outbreak, effective, effective me by security measure on farms, by just like Femi has introduced me, Dr. James Bapawa Getty. I'm the GM of Adamo Nigeria Limited. And by the grace of God, I've been in the industry since 1998, 1994. And also I, I moved around the country uh see how things are going on and just like you have said that i can tell you more than i can tell more than five million farm have been affected more than five million i tried to place today all the farm that i can vote for that had basically is a lot so we are on estimating the the this outbreak of ai in nigeria well because of time i'm only going to talk on two modules one what are the AI transmission routes? We have to know that one. We have to know the route. All over the world, that's what they are doing. They, they develop country. And I think Africa and Nigeria is not exceptional. We want to know what are the routes of AI. Then the second model is what can farmer do to prevent AI from entering his farm? I think these are two topics I'm going to briefly with a short time to, to talk on. One, if you look at this every influenza and disease in, in poultry, there are two types. Basically, the low pandemic and the high pandemic. The low pandemic, mostly, you can see the signs just like Newcastle on a farm. A lot of farmers are having a, a, the low pandemic, and they are thinking of always vaccinating, vaccinating, but the mortality persists. So the low pandemic AI is often come in the form of Newcastle. So anytime you see abnormal Newcastle, maybe instead of Newcastle, please, our driver farmer, to always call for a veterinarian to come and assess them. Not that because you see, but I have to call the you see paralysis, you see shellless egg, you conclude that you have it's Newcastle. No. Now that there is no pandemic AI in Nigeria, I would advise farmer to always consult your vet doctor for any vaccination for Newcastle now because the no pandemic AI is very rampant. I was even in Abuja last two weeks, and I think a lot of them are having this no pandemic AI. So we have to look at that critically. Then the highly pandemic virus causes systematic disease with high mortality. I have to be fast. And let's look at this uh, AI. First, it started in December 2000. So AI has been in the 1980s, 70s. But when you come to bad flu, we are talking about now is that it started in December 2003 in Korea. 
And by early 2004, Cambodia, China, Hong Kong, Japan, Thailand, and Vietnam go the own share. Then by mid-2004, all Southeast Asia, they have AI. Then by 2005, Russia and Turkey, they have their own share. Then by 2006, that time the Europe, the Middle East, and Africa reported their own share. Then North America is 2004, but it was no opportunity. They didn't have uh, AI. So if you look at the spread of this AI all over the world, it's from the low te tropical temperature. That's from the Korea, Cambodia, China, Hong Kong, Russia. It now starting coming down by those migrating band. And if you look at the pathway of this transmission, there are many parts, but basically all over the world, it is the migrating, migrating wild birds. Contact with environment and resident wild birds and poultry that are high risk. So that is where the root is coming from, migrating birds. I have the first, I don't discuss whatever, well, at least the, those that attend the meeting the other day, they will know all through Beijing, transportation, vehicle, life bags. But the major issue of the AI is the migrating wild birds. And if you look at the spread of the AI, particularly the wild birds, they act as a reservoir. And the infected birds shed virus in saliva, nether secretion, and feces. That's the only thing they're sharing the virus. I want someone to know that one. And of this saliva, nether secretion, and feces, the fecal to oral is the most common mode, is the most common mode of spread between birds. So on farms and environment, it is a fecal and oral transmission that is very common based on scientific data. Then look at the roots. Like I told you before, it's the migrating bird that transmitting the virus all over the world. And in Nigeria, I don't have the document, but based on what some other poultry veterinarians are saying, there are three routes that the AI come into Nigeria. And these are areas that if government uh, are up to the game, we have such issues like bomb, we have to collaborate and look at this route. That was other developed countries I, I, I try to adopt the way of preventing AI now. But so far in Nigeria, we identified three routes. That is one, that is East West African flowway. Now the birds are flowing. These are the wild birds. That is the East African West Asia flowway. There's Black Sea flow flyway. Then the East Atlantic flyway. These are how the migratory birds are, are moving around, and they end up shedding the various the virus within environment. So in Nigeria, we identify three routes. So we need to people are farmer alert. They have to come out and let's identify this route and see how what can farmer do. Once you have an information, we cannot know how to prevent it. And let's, let's pick the East Atlantic flyway because that's one that is very common. That is bring, the birds are coming to, there are three, like I said, there are three routes, but the East Atlantic flow, flyway is the most common. And mil, because millions of migrating birds are flowing, and they are breeding ground, it's mostly green, Greenland. Iceland and Russia. This is why they are big, because the, the place temp, temp, uh, is a temporary region, no temporary region. So they, they stay there and they, when they change in weather, they now move to, to other area. Some birds migrate more than 10 kilometers with top of site along the way. They, they, they can move for more than 10,000 kilometers, then they stop over and they move on their way. So the cooler weather in Europe leads to birds uh, flying further west in great numbers in the winter. So that's why you find that in Nigeria, you find that during the winter, especially when the weather is too cool in Europe, the birds are trying to move away. And they will now come to Nigeria around that November, December. And you discover that most, most a time, bird flu starts from the north. If you look at it before the southwest, because of this East Atlantic flyway, you find that we start recording the bird flu in the north before it now comes down to the south, 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 because the way the birds are migrating from Europe to to Nigeria. So I want, want to identify those routes. And these are the birds that are, as they are flying. These wild birds, they, now, they will now bring it bird flu based on the, you can see I tried to design the wild birds and the display of bird flu. And I like, I, I suggest that, like Shelly said, we don't have data. And you know, the government are not serious. We have a good research institute. We have a federal government. We have pan farmers that are part of the state of Nigeria. 
but all of us were even failed the industry. In a developed country, even African country like Egypt, even Ghana that's close to us, even Cameroon that are close to us, you can say that developing the data, sharing information. But Nigeria were the gent of Africa, things are happening and we don't know. I must tell you there are a lot of farms, a lot of farms that have AI, and you find out that the moment they discovered the, the bats are, uh, they are dying, they couldn't sell up the bats. Nobody knew about AI on that farm. But if, for, if there is information and a, a certain agents of government that have the power to release the information to people without mentioning the name of the farm, at least that will, that will now give farmer to, to, to enforce biosecurity on his farm. And like sometimes I, I live around Bega in, in Lagos, when they say there's a report of AI in, in, in Kano, in Jos, Bauchi, and Kaduna, there was no report of AI in, in Lagos. But you see that people are bringing goods from north. They are bringing the local fowl on top of it. And nobody stopped them. No vetnet stopped them. So it's a problem. And this, for example, I, I want to look into British. I have about 20, uh, 20 sites of poultry association that I used to watch. Like this one is British Free Range Egg producer association they have the latest outbreak even today i've checked even today now they recorded eight, eight farmers ai in british and they post it so if you have such information it will go a long way even for farmers to protect against it but here everybody's on his own now let's how is the mosquito poultry bars infected like the one we now keep there you know the the magnetic bars will come stay come and mix with the wild, with the, our indigenous wild birds, from there they now move to poultry, and that's why the virus is being infected. So, one saliva, that's the first, the, like I said before, the nasal secretion, then the feces. Contamination occurs by direct contact. You know, these wild birds, as they come, they, they, they saliva, they discharge secretion, they discharge feces. Then, contamination occurs by direct contact. Either if your farm, you have water log around your farm, because the birds are coming through dry season, and you are a farmer that is water lodge, luggage, a log around the farm, those birds want to come and eat, drink water there. And before you know it, and if it's close to your farm, they will shed virus. There are even so far we are discouraging them, discouraging them. You find that they have poultry farm, they have fish pond. If they are not taking those farms, they not have air because the, the local, the wild bird may not come and drink water and shed virus on your farm. And that's direct contact. And then the surface. We are going to talk on that one. Then there is dust. The dust, the virus can move by dust, but at least the, I cannot tell how many kilometers it can move, but the dust can also carry the virus to your farm. Then there is seed, and then there is water. These are contamination that can come by almost six meters. The red contact, the surface, the dust, the feed, and the water. But not viral survival in feces, because we discover in feces is a major, like I told you before, Feces oral contamination is the highest. And if you if you not check the feces, it has discovered that the virus can stop 18 hours at 42 degrees centigrade. I can stay in feces for 24 hours at 7 degrees centigrade. It can stay for five days at 24 degrees centigrade. I can stay for eight weeks at 4 degrees centigrade. If you look at that temperature closely, Nigeria is an advantage. Not even have too much of virus at the outbreak. If you follow the normal standard poultry practice, because of the temperature we have, you don't like, you don't like this AI now, you find out that it's rapid in the in developed country where the temperature is very low than in Africa. It's the same thing like this AI, because the AI don't survive outside the host, please outside the host at high temperature. So with that data, if the industry is regulated and government is serious, and the research institute we have in Nigeria, they know what they're doing. Honestly, AI will not be a much problem to us based on this one. But you can see that there is a problem. The, the influenza virus, now we are finished on the first model. I have to ask you first because of time to give it to me. Now, you now look at the second model that is effective by scrutiny as critical prevention. My personal observation. And the, if you look at 2006, we have been AI, it will go, certain period, it, it will go. But from 2000, early to January 2001 to date, 
there is no one that there's no AI in Nigeria. That way I can tell you attractively. From early 2001 and to date, there is never a month that there's, there's, we don't have a case of AI. But I know government will not have the data. They, people don't disclose it. But I can tell you attractively, I have my data. And since that time, the number has been increasing and it has been a commercial layer all over the country. And a lot of tests is coming up every day. So therefore, by security is the cornerstone to reduce the probability of the virus spreading in the environment, especially in Nigeria. And I sit down and look at it. We need to implement the principle of disease control. That's what pharma needs now. We need to implement a principle. You know, biosecurity is different. The principle of biosecurity is different. There are two things that biosecurity, there is principle of disease control. So I want all farmers to implement a principle of disease control on the farm. And what are the principles of disease control? One, we have biosecurity, we have vaccination, we have medication. But just unfortunate, there is no treatment for viral disease so far, both for human and both for human and animal. No drug for viral. And AI is a viral disease. So it's not left with vaccination and biosecurity. And if you look at the vaccination, it has been banned in Nigeria. But I can tell you attractively, the way this AI is going, we don't have choice than to do to implement vaccination. We don't have any choice. The, we don't have any choice but implement vaccination. But we need professional veterinarian, the research institute, have to do surveillance because the virus affect like the I listened to the other speaker the other day, cow, sheep, other species of animals. So that there may be a problem. And we shall learn from Egypt. Nigeria shall go and learn from Egypt. Because you look in Africa, Egypt was the worst country that was hit by bad flu. That was 2006. And what did they do? All the scientists in Egypt have to sit down and do the surveillance and came out to report that the only way to, to prevent this is by vaccination. And Egypt is not only vaccinating, but Egypt, I can tell you attractively, they are the one, one of the best producer of AI vaccine in the world for now, Egypt. And most countries, even all that are buying the vaccine in Egypt, Egypt has a, a plant that are producing AI. And since that time, when other countries are battling with AI, Egypt don't have AI because they saw the strength, the H, they hate all the strength, they, they know it, and they produce a vaccine and it's healthy. Cameroon here, they, Cameroon here, they usually they don't have issue with that one. Most countries now, I know of more than 15 or 18 countries in Africa, they are using the vaccine. And as I'm talking to you now, at least they have respite in AI. And if you look at America now, USA, just last week, they released a report. They are contemplating vaccination. And thank God, we also have some scientists are not sleeping. Scientists from CEFA, they have developed a vaccine that you don't need to use even the virus itself. Use the protein of the virus. So with that one, there's no issue of shedding mutation that doesn't arise again. Because most of the time, people are looking at the, the mutation or, or the different strain. But at least scientists are working. And there's a time that I learned that even America, even America, they stock the vaccine in the store, but they have not used it, but they, they store the vaccine. So we need to talk, I think I will from a lot and those in the Ministry of Agri, they should think twice because farmers are losing bad, that's their, and they, they don't compensate. Farmers are losing. And if you say bicycle is good, bicycle is good. But what do you think of USA, they have AI? Even France, last France, in February and March, they lost, they lost 11 million bags this year, France. February and March, they lost 11 million of AI. And these are countries that practice all the standards. So you find that biosecurity is, is good, but it's not a solution. And even in Nigeria, I can tell you attractively without missing any word, the five most toughest farm with good biosecurity in Nigeria, they had AI. The best farm with biosecurity in Nigeria, they had AI. The five best farm with good biosecurity measure in Nigeria, they had AI. So you find that the only solution for me is vaccination for now.
Bioskin is good, though, but vaccination is the only solution. And let the vet doctors, the farmers, have taught government and vote. We have the good institute involved, and we are not utilizing them. So I use this medium to see how we can utilize the vote to come up with a vaccine that can use just what Egypt have done. They didn't import the vaccine from developed countries. They produce the vaccine there for their own use. So now they have to wake up and do the same. The, the, well, let's just, the biosecurity for, for um, all pharma, what is biosecurity? It's a two word joined together, bio and security. And bio means in science is life. And security is safeguarding or protecting. So if you now mind the word, it's safeguarding the life or protecting the, protecting the life of your birds. That's what it means. Because birds is their living to their bio. So biosecurity is not just an impressive word pulled out of a dictionary. It is a way to reduce the risk of introducing and spreading of disease on your farm. It is a manageable management tool that shall be implemented and practiced at all level of your farm. And when we talk about this biosecurity, we have three structures of biosecurity. We have three. We have the conceptual biosecurity, we have the structural biosecurity, we have the operational biosecurity. And I know most of the farmers that listen to me now, they already have a farm. So we can, you cannot go and change the location or, of your farm. You cannot go and change the structure of your farm. So for the purpose of this discussion, we are going to limit our discussion on operational biosecurity. But these are the three pillars of biosecurity, conceptual biosecurity, structural biosecurity, operational biosecurity. And this operational biosecurity, a lot of Nigerian farmer, a, almost 70% of farmer is that when they introduce new birds to the farm and they populate the farm, they sell the bar, that time they, that, that time they will do cleaning and disinfection on the farm. And we are saying, no, don't wait till when you dispose of your farm before you start cleaning your cages, cleaning your water line, do sanitation, no. There are about seven things you, you do on your farm when your farm is operational. One, check your feed and water always. The staff, visitors, personal hygiene for them always. Then the rats, rodent, always. Monitor water, monitor manual removal on your farm. I say fecal and oral contamination is the highest. That means fecal as the feces is very important. So manual removal is very key. And if you on farm, go and mark it. If you go to a farm today, and there be, if you see a farm, give you letters every eight weeks, two things must happen on that farm. One, manual, manual removal is not good, or they have abused the vaccine. If not, why should we give vaccine eight, eight weeks? I laugh at those farms. So manual removal is key. And carcass disposal. Then equipment, always on your farm. How do you manage equipment? And then transport. These are the seven items that a farmer shall put his or her mind when the, when the farm is operational. Anyone that you left unchecked may bring problem to your farm. Then, but we discovered that the operational biosecurity is the weakest form of defensive against disease prevention in Nigeria and poultry business. Very fast. And once you do a biosecurity, is that I look at biosecurity like a chain in a vehicle or in a motorcycle. Even though you have new chain all over, and one chain is bad, that, that, that if you are moving, it, it will not be of normal movement. Either will make noise or you not go straight. That's what I discovered from my youth. So the same thing with biosecurity. No matter your biosecurity is, is spark, and one link of chain, one link is missing, all other biosecurity will be ineffective. So you make sure that all area is spam. And let's look at the biosecurity principles. It must be reasonable and practical. Don't bring something you cannot do it. It must be reasonable and practical. On biosecurity, because biosecurity program does not fit all farm. Don't copy one farm for other. Be specific to your farm, your biosecurity. It's not either, it is black versus white versus gray area. And the goal of a farmer is to reduce the gray areas of the farm plan. So nothing as perfect by spirit on the farm. The only thing that look for a gray area 
and then make sure that you work you work to prevent it. And let us also look at understanding by spiritual concept. A quick review. I have a lot of slide on this one, but because I will give you limited time, now I'm shutting it. One attitude and frame of mind. Attitude, attitude. You put some farm. They they have a food dip, but people people jump it and entertain. It's attitude and and the frame of mind. Or an MD is coming to the farm with his visitor. The MD will say, okay, because he is the owner of the farm and he's coming with a big man. You don't want to waste time for them to spread the car, you move. It's, a, it's an attitude and frame mind of work. So it's a common sense that it's an investment and you want to protect it. Follow the, follow the principle of the prosperity. And everyone must buy into it. And there should be a developing working relationship. There should be a good communication. If you are the owner of the, if you are the owner of the farm, you are coming with a, a important part to your farm. Communicate to the person. If you are employing an attendant, communicate to the attendant. Communicate. If you are coming to the farm, communicate to everybody. And there should be accountability for the, for the owners, the farm employment, and even government officials that are coming to farm anyhow. Accountability is everyone's responsibility in the biosecurity to prevent AI on a farm. And as I said before, biosecurity is an attitude more than practice. So it's not a sure practice. It's our attitude by security. And most farm, most farm is a big problem. Quickly, I, in the, they are what you call National Poultry Improvement Plan. They call them IPIP. And in developed countries, because of, what, because of this AI now, they, they mandate, there are about 170 points, 170 that the National Poultry Improvement Plan came up that once you start a farm and you don't have this one in place, they will close the farm. So that not spread the AI or other infection around, around farms, other, to the other farm. So, and out of the, because of our time, I just picked 10 out of that point. And these are areas that even such institute, the government, the post association have to come up with it. Though the, though the industry is not regulated, but I will beg, the association to come up with a plan that if you want to start a poultry business, this is the way to go. These are things I have to put in, 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 in place. One, by security responsibility. I, as I'm talking to you today, I don't know of any farm in Nigeria that have a security officer. Watch me, even the big farm. So we need to start. These are some of the points that before you have a farm, you must have it, whether you have small or big farm. So there's another person that's by security officer on your farm, which will develop written by security protocol, which will include the minimal principle of by security, responsible for implementation and review annually. So it's every farm must have by security officer. You are like you have a chief security officer, you have farm manager, you have supervisor, you must have a by security officer on your farm. And the basket, the basket officer shall be an experienced officer, probably a vet, who shall be responsible for developing a site specific plan and training all personnel who enter the farm. The basket officer shall have the authority also. You, the owner shall give the authority to ensure compliance with basket protocol and take corrective action as needed. He or she shall continue to adopt a plan and procedure to address challenging, changing risk on the farm. And these are things that I, I used to develop a plan for farmers, and I want to share it briefly with you. I'll tell you develop by the city plan. One, it's all, every other one called, it's not, it's not a one plan. There should be a review annually. Every year, you have to keep or review your basicity. What you call review annually. Number one, complete the basicity checklist. You must have a basket checklist on your farm. One, and then assess it with yourself or third party, probably call a vet. You have a basket check, then call a vet as a third person to check it for um, you. Dr. James, sir, uh, yes. sorry, I'll have to interrupt you. We have just about five minutes left. Okay, no problem. If no you problem. can quickly just round up Thank your you. presentation. Identify Thank your you, sir. Identify your basket gap, protect your gap based on risk. Develop an action plan to address those gaps 
and they write down clearly your biosecurity protocol. Important thing. Parameter fencing is key. If you want to have a farm, you must have a parameter fencing that the market. Well, this parameter fencing are not talking of maybe thief, thief, for rodent, rodent, reptiles that come and infect your bird. Either you can that if you go to Ajala, I'm not saying you have to pay. Even barbed wire, even there are some people go to Ajala, they plant a tree that even snake cannot pass. So think of parameter fencing. Get personal. They should dress like this. This means I visit one of the farm. You must have, you must have, nobody should enter the farm with his shoe or his cloth. Because he will remove your clothes. It's not work. You must, you must have a changing room. No matter who the person is, the person should not come with his own clothes. You must have a changing room for an employer. And you must provide slippers at the gate. You put it something like that. Anybody come have changes and enter the farm. And look at uh, the way they move on the farm boots now. Make sure before you eat any pen, the boots will clearly clean. Look at this boot now. If you, if you now go to like you see a lot of bacteria, the same thing with that. We, these are small, small issues that, that matter most. You must have a foot deep like this person, my friend. And this one is not, it, most people do concrete. We do advertise one again. There's a plastic now they produce. If you want, I can tell you what they, a hard plastic. That one is where you can even remove it. Not that uh, all this concrete they make at the point where they come, it 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 will not dilute, dilute your uh, your disinfectant. No, still on personal. Any any person that is working on your farm shall not have a farm. Or oh, there are some people from farm, big farm. Someone is working and has a farm. It's not ideal. Or oh, you are a doctor on the farm or manager. You still go and consult for farm outside. It's not it's not allowed. That way, put any person that holding it. That take care of your poultry somewhere to not eat at the farm. And also, if you look at it, also on personal, even the doctor are coming from outside, they come by the old, old layer, or come to work, or do vaccination, or, or, or do big tripping, or the vehicle, vehicle they, should be, they should be totally disinfected before they enter your farm. And wild birds, look at some farms now. This is what I'm talking about now. They, they flush the litter, water will stay outside. All the white people come and be drinking water and looking for more gold. Before you know it, they, they shed the shed virus there, they move to that place. So make sure, even though you are flushing your litter, let's go far. And such farm will also have Newcastle, or even they'll be vaccinating. Rat. Rat can spread AI. It's not, it's not a reservoir, but rat can spread AI. So you have to be very careful. You have to do uh, pen proof rat. And the only way I can do point proof right by whatever farmer now to do go around your pen and have the artist to discharge the water. You make a oh, your pen, you make a water around and let the water inside always. There's no way that can pass through the water into your farm. What you discover also that look at this rat. These are well by flowing over and they may shit and drop on the roof. You don't know. The rat may move there, touch it, and enter it affected. The rat may be outside. You have a well girl, something like that, geese. And they touch the feces, they enter your farm, you have AI or any bacterial disease. So, red, red, so far, they're not reservoir, but it is spreading AI. So, make sure you have red proof pen. Please, equipment that are using on the farm, don't share equipment with anybody. Make sure they're always clean. Then, you are get this, uh, this is a farm in water that we consult for. Look at automatic, they will come enter here and then shower the car. This for staff. This one for staff. This one for car. And staff will come in there. Either deep, shower the staff before they enter the pen. And they have a changing room here. This other farm in uh, Jebode, standard, the same thing like that. So we need to not protect the virus from entering your farm. This other one, they use high pressure. But if you're using nasty spray, it will not work. If you're using nasty spray, you're wasting your time. Because then you need pressure to move even the dirty on the car. Like I show you on, on, uh, on boot. You need something with pressure. But those napkin spray, it cannot even go around the tire. Please, very important. Dead bird disposal. Other people, that, dead bird shall dispose in a manner that does not attract wild birds, rodents, and wild animals. Because these are what is, what is attracting the, uh, those wild birds and rodents to come to close the farm, and then you have AI. And uh, look at some farm that we, this is a, a very good farm, automated farm in Nigeria, but look at how they dump the mortality outside. It's not ideal. That's it's attitude, attitude and common sense. But this is a farm in Kaduna, 
First Pacific, they have incinerator. Any dead one they put there on the farm, they have good incinerator. Now they have burned their uh, dead birds. They have to reduce infection on the farm. Manure, I've said before, make sure your manure is always removed in a manner to prevent exposure to birds, either on or off the farm, to prevent disease. Very, very careful. Make sure that. And I'll also advise some don't use manure of your farm to, to of the for your pen to 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 fertilize your farm within the farm. It is no good. You may allow to have AI or you may all all battle with equally. Water, water is key, like water is very key. So always make sure you clean your water. Clean your water always. Clean your water. You know, you have hard water, you have soft water. Go and look for the to be testing your water. Is it high or lab? Is it hard or, or soft water? So you always clean your water always. You can see another farm now, it's open, no cover. So ten days of having air now is with the, with the way we are now is very high because it's open. So infection can just enter the rat can just go and drink water here, as we see, and they transmit virus to your, to, to your pen. So make sure that all the water should not be exposed so that those rats or rodents and water that cannot touch, cannot come here and infect your water and the body will have AI. Water is key, like this was called bad film. I know that if, if they tell drink this water, you will not drink. Very dirty water. If they tell you now, will you go to water and they inject you with this rich? Not allowed. So always make sure that your water is always clean. Clean, please. Staff training. These are the nine points. Staff training is also key on farm. You must, when you have a basket officer, you should have the training either every three months or either, either four, four or six months to be training. The farm staff. This is a big farm now in Southwest. We went there for training by security. Look at look at this stuff. You look at this stuff closely. All of them were given the hairnet to cover, but it's only one person that cover it. It's attitude and frame and common sense. This person they were giving shoe, but this one did not did not put his shoe. So these are issues that we are having with all staff, with the owners, the consultant on farm. And that's how AI is transmitted. Because if I give you, if there is time now, if they can tell you how many, how many hours air can even stay in your hair, like I give you on feces and temperature, even on a wooden cloth, there's data for that. Even on your hair, even some disease, macroplasma, AI, there's there is hours they can spend on your hair. That's why you need to have, and by the time you eat one farm, you transmit it. That's why you need hairness. By the time you want to eat one farm, you remove it and put another one. It's very important. Poultry workers are definitely a farmer's greatest asset. It does not mean any difference between whether the farm produced is by burella meat or egg. A poultry farm is only as good as the worker it keeps. So always train your staff. Train your staff. Keep on training. Keep on training. Keep on training on this AI issue. That's the only way out. So, so that avoid the weak point. To avoid the gray area that may likely you may likely have. AI. And also the last point on that NP, NPIP is pullet replacement. If you are buying pullet from one farm to your farm, you have to be very careful. You have to be very, very careful. Especially if you buy point of lay, you have to ask a question. You have to be impossible now. They have to give you history and, and test. And even the car they use in transporting, which, car, which farm do you go to? So I would prefer that you, a farmer, if one by point of land, if possible, you get your own transport, go and rent your own driver, spray it, let it spray in your presence before you go to the farm and carry. Because only they, they, they don't go and supply, come back, carry, and they may go to a farm that has AI. So replacement plate is another area that we have to look at it also. Because those trucks, they are moving from one farm to another, and they may end up spreading the AI. So my dear farmers and colleagues, Biosecurity is an investment. So the way you're investing on your chicken, biosecurity also is an investment. Because when you, when you have a standard biosecurity on your farm, it improves flock health, it improves animal welfare, it improves flock performance, and sustain production for long. Biosecurity is in our hand. All what I've said, is 90% is in our hand, the biosecurity. So I will advise farmer to make sure that 
they shall take by spirit serious on their farm. Nothing like I'm the MD, I'm the consultant, I'm the supervisor or attendant. Everybody should equal when it comes to by spirit. And everybody shall follow the protocol of by spirit. And lastly, I want to advise farmers. Please, once you have 5,000 and above, or you have or either you have five above, or you have more than five workers on your farm, please and please employ a basket officer. Even though you do other work, but try to have a basket officer and call a vet to come and review your farm and look at the gray area and you write down the checklist of what you're supposed to do every day on your farm. Thank you all for listening. I remember, I remember you all. Uh, Dr. James Abawa Getty, and these are my number. I, I was I tried to be fast because of time given to me. Do follow us on all our social media platforms on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. All you have to do is just type Farm Alert. We're there. You can send us messages on direct messages. You can make your suggestions. Thank you so much, and see you. Um, on our, see you on our next session, which is on the 23rd of April. We'll, we'll bring you interesting topics and we'll have an interactive session just like today. So I hope you all enjoyed yourself.